These men, the nation's Project Mercury astronauts, are here after a long and perhaps unprecedented series of evaluations which told our medical consultants and scientists of their superb adaptability to their coming flight. Which of these men will be first to orbit the Earth, I cannot tell you. He won't know himself until the day of the flight. The astronaut training program will last probably two years. And during this time, our urgent goal is to subject these gentlemen to every stress, each unusual environment they will experience in that flight. Before the first flight, we will have developed our Mercury spaceship to the point where it will be as reliable as man can devise. We expect it to be as reliable as any experimental aircraft. It's my pleasure to introduce to you, and I consider it a very real honor, gentlemen. From your right, Malcolm S. Carpenter, Leroy, Leroy G. Cooper, John H. Glenn, Virgil I. Grissom, Walter M. Shira, Alan B. Shepard, Donald K. Slayton. These ladies and gentlemen are the nation's Mercury astronauts. Uh, thank you all. Uh, I really am here uh, as a spokesman only for uh, the team of, of scientists that we pulled together at <clears throat> the AeroMed Laboratory in Dayton. Uh, from, we pulled these scientists together from both the Army and the Navy and Air Force Resources. Uh, this was melded together in a composite team whose objectives were to subject all of the candidates to stresses which most nearly sti uh, simulated those which we predict the individual will meet in the first uh, orbital flights of Project Mercury. Uh, all that I have uh, to say, Walt, is that from our standpoint, the most difficult job was in not taking all of the 31 or 32 that started through. Uh, it was really a difficult job, and it's a great tribute, I think, to uh, our uh, Air Force, Navy, and Marine flying personnel that they came through with such flying colors. I've been very proud to be associated with this project, uh, and we on the aeromedical side have learned a great deal from it. Thank you. And now I'd like to call on Captain Norman Barr. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm quite sure that no finer group of men could have been selected by the tests that are available to us today. All of us have, are very sure that the correct men have been selected for this program. These men have been chosen from a population of about 180 million to represent the United States in this uh, important uh, project. And we are all behind them, 100%. Thank you, Captain Barr. And now I call on Charlie Donlan, who is Bob Gilroy's right-hand man. There's little I can add to what's been said, except that we're delighted, of course, to have these astronauts with us. They bring to the program a wide range of experience in engineering, test flying, and other scientific and engineering disciplines. And I hope we're going to have a chance uh, to work with them in a bigger proportion than we have had to today. Thank you, Charlie. And now we come to the Q&A. I would ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to address your questions to me. I will repeat them, and then we'll get them answered. Peter? I'd like to ask uh, Lieutenant Carpenter if his wife has had anything to say about this and or his four children. They're all as enthusiastic about the program as I am. How about the other? Well, same question. Uh, suppose we go down the uh, the line one, two, three on that. Uh, 
the question is, has your good lady and have your children had anything to say about this? Uh, yes, mine have. Mine are very enthusiastic also. I can answer the same for myself. I don't think any of us could really go on with something like this. We didn't have pretty good backing at home, really. Uh, on my wife's attitude toward this has been the same as it has been all along through all my flying, that uh, if it's what I want to do and, and uh, she's behind it and the kids are too, 100%. Well, my wife feels the same way, or of course I couldn't be here. Hey, uh, she's uh, with me all the way, and the boys are too little to uh, realize what's going on yet, but I'm sure they feel the same way. My wife has agreed that professional opinions are mine, career is mine, but we also have to have a family life that we like, and this is part of the agreement. I can't say much for my youngest daughter. She's only 18 months, but my son does have a quite an interest in the program. I have no problems at home. My family's in complete agreement. <laughs> well, I can't add anything to what the other gentleman has said. Uh, what I do is pretty much my business, uh, professional-wise, and uh, my wife normally goes along with it 100%. Next question, please. <clears throat> Uh, the question is, we have three Air Force, three Navy, and one Marine. Was this on purpose? Uh, I'd like to answer that one if I might, because I was born in Vermont, which is almost as bad as being born in Missouri from the standpoint of looking things at things with a somewhat jaundiced eye. I said, how came it came out this way? Uh, Randy Lovelace tells me, uh, Bob Gilruth tells me, everyone associated with the project tells me that they did it by numbers and not by service, and it just happened that way. Next question. I noticed that uh, the three gentlemen on, the, uh, on our left have been smoking. The question is, and the Tobacco Trust, please uh, close your ears, uh, that it is noticed that three of our seven young men are smoking. What will they be doing uh, when they get up in the capsule? Perhaps, uh, Randy, you might tackle that one. Well, I think they're a pretty mature men, and we'll leave it up to them in large part. Of course, we have a few months for an indoctrination program. <laughs> uh, let's take a poll. How many of you gentlemen smoke? I'll have to qualify it myself. I quit two. Three and a half. <laughs> I quit once for three and a half days. Uh, the words high motivation have been used here today and earlier. What is the motivation of these men? Uh, let's, the question is, what is the motivation of these men? Let's try that starting from the left and go down. Well, get them to get their hometown and, and with this? Yes, I think if you gentlemen will, will give your hometown and your age as you do this, this will be helpful to the boys the, on the lenses and also to the reporters. Their name, first of all, Bob. Name, full name age and hometown place. Okay, my full name is Donald K. Slayton, and my hometown is Sparta, Wisconsin, and uh, my age is 35, and uh, I'm in the Air Force. As far as my motivation is concerned, uh, I feel that this is the future of not only this country, but the world. Uh, we've gone about as far as we can uh, on this globe, and we have to start looking around a bit. And uh, it's just a natural expansion of flight. And uh, consider it in that light. It's merely a, an extension of flight. We have to go somewhere, and that's all that's left. And I uh, wasn't around when all the initial exploration was done in this country and around the world. And this is an excellent opportunity to be in on something new, the beginning of it. Alan B. Shepard from East Derry, New Hampshire. And I am also 35. I don't think there's any question that 
we are on the threshold of space travel. We have seen many evidences along that line. Project Mercury is just one part of the endeavor towards space travel. I quite personally am intensely interested in it and just delighted to have been given the opportunity to participate. <clears throat> My name is Walter Shira, Walter M. Shira, Jr. I originally came from Ordell, New Jersey. I think in my answer to uh, what is my motivation, I think it's typical of most of us in this country. We're